The Muji Fountain Pen is a cylindrically shaped pen that's mostly made of anodized aluminum. The bottom finial is flat and it has a gray dot in the middle and an outer sleeve, and more about that sleeve in just a second. The top finial is flat and it features a gray dot. We then have a short and fairly thin bent metal clip, which is springy and functional. The cap is void of any markings and it is a pull-off cap, which reveals a stainless steel nib. At the time of recording this video, this fine nib is the only offering that's available. It's made by Schmidt, which is one of the three major German nib manufacturers, the other being Jovo and Bonk. And on the back, we have a typical black plastic feed. The section starts with a chrome piece that tapers back, and then we see a recessed sleeve, which matches the end finial, and then a section that is straight and knurled. The section is flush to the pen barrel and the pen barrel is then straight all the way back. In the hand, the pen is lightweight, well-balanced, and a comfortable length for long writing sessions. The neural texture on the section is very comfortable and gives you good grip. The cap posts through that back sleeve And it makes the pen a little bit longer, but it's an extremely lightweight cap and it doesn't really alter the balance in any way. In terms of size comparisons, here's the Muji Fountain Pen, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. Before we get into the disassembly of the Muji Fountain Pen, I want to take a moment here to compare it with a few other models. Up top, we have the Lamy CP1, which is another thin cylindrically shaped fountain pen. This one is primarily made out of brass with a black matte coating, and it also features a brushed stainless steel clip that's spring loaded. Next, we have the Lamy 59, which is the predecessor to the Lamy CP1. In all dimensions, it's virtually identical to the CP1. However, it has a stainless steel outer shell. And down below, we have the Hongdian A3, which is perhaps the most different of the bunch, but it is similar to the Muji fountain pen in the fact that it's also made out of aluminum. We can see in the cap form, the Muji is just a little bit longer than the Lamy's, and the A3 is significantly shorter than the Muji fountain pen. As I mentioned, the Lamy's both have spring-loaded clips, whereas the Muji and the A3 have bent metal clips. Let's take a look at these pens with their caps removed. All pens have caps that pull off. The Muji is the longest pen again in this form, followed by the Lamy's, and the A3 is about the same length as the two Lamy's. The section on the Muji is the longest of the bunch, followed by the A3, and then the Lamy's both have the shortest section. The Lamy's also have a contrasting section that's made out of a plastic finish. The A3, on the other hand, has the most traditionally shaped section that tapers from the nib back to the pen barrel. The Muji is the only one that has a section that's not only long and knurled, but is also flush with the pen body, and that's because the cap butts up right against the section rather than covering the section itself. All four pens have stainless steel nibs. The A3 and the Muji both have number five size nibs, while the Lamy's have a proprietary nib and it matches the same style as what's on the Safari. Let's take a look at these pens with their caps posted. All pens have caps that post securely, but the A3 by far has the deepest posting cap. The top three, on the other hand, have caps that post pretty shallowly and they make for a fairly long pen. Disassembling the Muji fountain pen, no tools are required. Cap pulls off. And if we take a look inside, we can see there is a cap liner, but it's held inside with friction. So I would not recommend disassembling it. The section can be unscrewed from the barrel. And that's it for the barrel. And then the nibbed feed can be pulled right out. And at this point, the pen is fully disassembled. To reassemble, we'll start with the nib and feed. 
line those two up. There is a ridge on the back to make sure that the nib is fully uh, seated on the feed. Push that into your grip section. Screw on the barrel. Followed by the cap. And now we're ready to ink up. Inking up the Muji fountain pen, no converter was provided, but it did come with a short international cartridge. Simply unscrew the back barrel and insert your cartridge. And then reinstall your back barrel. Give it a few moments and we'll be ready to write. Okay, right in with the Muji fountain pen. Cap pulls off. And we are writing with a stainless steel fine nib, again, made by Schmidt. And I really like this nib. It's smooth, it has a moderate amount of feedback, so much so that you can feel the page that you're writing on, um, somewhat similar to writing with a number two pencil, but it's not at all scratchy or toothy. Our ink is just a standard black, which came with the pen. For flax, I'm gonna turn the page You can actually push out a little bit of line variation with this pen and for reverse writing. It's pretty smooth, but quite dry. So I would say if you were in a pinch for a thinner line, you could reverse write, but it might not be the most reliable in the world. So what do I think of the Muji fountain pen? I really like this pen. I love its minimalist style, and I think the contrast between the grip section and the rest of the pen has kind of a charming look to it. I find it extremely comfortable in the hand, especially due to this knurling that was used. It's a very fine knurling that gives you good grip. And considering that the pen is only $20, I really love the fact that it has a Schmidt nib. As I mentioned, this is probably one of my favorite nibs from the big three nib manufacturers. Now, is this the perfect pen? No, I think there is certainly room for improvement and I'll go over some of those right now. I think probably the biggest one is the way that you post this cap. You see, it has to sit inside this sleeve and the tolerances are just a little bit tight on this pen where it requires a lot of pressure to secure it in place. Furthermore, when I pull it out, it actually makes a popping sound suggesting that there is a little bit of a pressure buildup underneath. Also, when it's posted, the pen is quite long, and that is a complaint that I also had with the Lamy CP1. However, I don't really have that much to complain about with this one because when I have a long pen, I tend to just transfer my grip a little bit further back. And since this is such a long grip section, it's still a very comfortable pen when it's posted. Um, another area where this could be improved is the fact that this is only offered in a fine nib. Schmidt makes some beautiful nibs, and I wish that they would consider opening this up to their mediums and their broads. And then another thing with this pen is the filling system. At $20, I think it would have been nice if Muji included a converter. I love international short cartridges because they're offered in a huge variety of colors, but look at the size of this barrel. It could easily have accommodated a converter. And lastly, the last area for improvement, I think, with this pen would be just the color. The fact that this is an anodized aluminum pen means that it should be pretty easy to produce this in other colors. 
And especially in this hobby, I think that's a big miss. There's so many people who love collecting pens of all different colors, and this one I think would have a great following if it was available in more. But with all that being said, it is a fantastic pen, a nice minimalist style that's comfortable and feels somewhat like writing with a number two pencil, which makes it a very good entry level pen for people who just want to get into fountain pens. Also, it has one of my favorite nibs, so you can't go wrong with that. And that just leaves me to say. Thank you for watching.